<laughs> so tell me a little bit about your dog. So she is 14 months old. She's an Alaskan Klikai, so high energy. We probably walk like three and a half to four miles a day. Wow. Um, but literally from, and I mean, aside from the walking, we have probably three to four, like 20 minute, like play sessions in the house. Um, I try to do a lot of like enrichment. So on hot days, especially like I'll bring her into a store with me and let her like sniff up in the aisles. Um, today we like, I've been trying to teach her to get used to like a kiddie pool. Yeah. Um, so I bought her like a kiddie pool, not, I don't have a backyard, but my parents do. So when we go to my parents, like just starting slow, like sitting in it dry first and then right. getting her in it wet. So then on these hot days, like she can go pull her paws off in there. Yeah. So, um, we do a lot of like training and still like working on the walking. Um, like she's good on these, she's not reactive, she's friendly, but, um, she wants to like run, run ahead of me everywhere and oh. sniff all the things and crisscross. So we're doing a lot of like training, a lot of brain games. She eats out of like puzzle feeders. That's awesome. So, like, I try to do a lot, but she's had separation anxiety from like the day I got her home. Um, she had, were there, and, was there more than one in her litter? Do all the dogs have the same issue? I don't know. No, I I do know this breed is I guess like predisposed to it, and um I talked to the woman who has her mom, and she was like, yeah, it's like common. You just have to keep working on it. Um, so, wow. oh, that's sort of a bummer. That would have been nice to know beforehand. And everyone I know that has this type of dog that I've run into in my neighborhood, when I'm like, uh-huh. oh, do they have separation anxiety? They're like, oh yeah, like it's just like a given. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah, well, that's something that would be nice to know about a breed before you adopt them, right? <laughs> you know, I I knew, but I didn't truly understand. Like, sure, when people were talking about separation anxiety, like the impression I was getting was like, oh, she's really gonna miss you when you're gone, and she's gonna be so happy when you get home, and like she's gonna like really want to be like with you, and she's gonna be like a one person dog. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's fine. You know, I held off on adopting a dog for quite a while because I was not in a place work-wise where I felt like I could give, I, you know, I feel like they are sentient beings. They like Absolutely. need attention. They cannot be alone all day. So during the pandemic, I started my own business. I started working from home. Um, I would say I work from home now, like 70, 30 And so I finally felt like, okay, I'm in a position where really I'm never going to be gone more than like four to five hours. So to me, I was like, oh, this is like a big accomplishment. This is going to be great for a dog. Like, I'm not going to have to leave them alone for like 10 hours a day, the way most people do and hire a walker. Like she can be alone at times two hours, maybe at times four hours. I was thinking like that it was going to be a breeze. Like, okay, even if she has separation anxiety, great. Cause I'm never going to be gone more than a few hours, sure. but I did not realize that it meant like she couldn't be alone more than a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, this sets you up. I don't know if you ever look at having children down the road. I tell a lot of my clients, if you're getting a dog, this sets you up for having kids because you know, we, a lot of the things that we train with dogs, we train with children. So, um, yeah, it, we just don't even know until you get there. So this is a hard first dog. Um, yeah. And it's been like, I've had her just about a year at this point. Um, and so right off the bat, I just really, like, I've never left her alone for hours. I've never left her more than like 10 minutes. Yeah. Like my trial runs were like, you know, cause many people are like, Oh, let them cry it out. Like, it's fine. Oh, you need to leave her for a couple hours and like, let her just get used to it. Um, and I haven't done that, but I've done like runs where like to see, like I'll watch her over zoom, like for 15 minutes and see like, does she eventually settle? And she never does. Yeah. Um, and at that point I was like, I don't really know, like how long do I test it out for if she's getting more and more upset. So that's when I started trying to look into working with the trainer. Um, and then I, I read the book and I, I got the app. So yeah. right now she's never left alone. Um, but it is like wearing because I have to rely on like my family to take care of her. We've done, um, trials at a doggy daycare and 
there's one place she's going, but we're doing it in short stints. Uh, yeah. It's overwhelming for her. And I can't leave her there on the weekends because um, on the weekends, they mix the big dogs and the little dogs and she doesn't do well with that. Oh. So it's just been like a struggle because I have to like ask my family to stay with her if I want to do anything. So my sure. social life is just like non-existent. Not right, exactly. And I also like can't kind of take on new clients at work because I feel like I'm using up all my favors. Yeah. yeah. And I, I work in fitness. So like a lot of clients want to train like early before work and or late after work. And yeah. so the hours I would need, the daycares are not open. So, you know, have you, so do you go to clients' homes? Would they, would any of them allow you to bring your dog and put up? I go to their homes, but it's like the, so like in Manhattan, a lot of the apartment buildings have gyms. So I'm oh, like in the gym, it's like not in it. their actual home. Yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's really hard. You know, I mean, it, it's hard. So there's, we have some daycares here. Um, because I do have clients that use some daycares and I'm really picky on daycares um, because here, you know, I don't know what it's like here, but uh, there, but a lot of times here, they don't cap the quantity that they take. They don't have enough people in the areas with the dogs. They never put them down for naps. And it's like, oh yeah, that can't happen, you know? So there are daycares that we have that people do out of their home. Like I do on my Friday is my daycare day. So I only take clients current mm -hmm. clients and I have to limit the dogs because I live in a small house and I have five dogs of my own, you know, right. but it's nice when you can find something or somebody's working out of their home and doing that. And I don't know if you guys have something like that. We do. And it's hard. You need like personal referrals really, because everybody got so many pandemic dogs that like everyone's yeah. completely booked. Yeah. And so even like the person, like some of the people I've reached out to, it's like, they're only doing walking services, but uh, wow. they don't have any room for anyone else in daycare, or they want you to commit to like a certain amount of hours, like certain days per week. Sure. Which also doesn't work for me. My, like my situation is more like, okay, if I want to take on a new client, like I might need to leave for, for like three or four hours somewhere. Right. Right. Or like, for example, like it's summer, like on a Saturday, like if I get invited to a barbecue or it's somebody's birthday or something, like I would like to be able to like drop her somewhere for a few hours to go. Sure. But I don't need to leave her there every single Saturday, the full right. day, you know, and that's right. what people are looking for. Those clients who can like, um, which I understand because they want to ensure a certain amount of income. But for me, it's as I can't work more right now, right. it's a lot to like lay out out up front uh, oh. for a service like I don't need. Yeah, absolutely. So the other thing, I don't know, you know, what, um, yeah. you know, I had a couple like that. I mean, even when I was teaching basic skills, um, my first Aussie was very much like that. He hated repetitions. If I did more than three, he shut down. He's like, I'm done. So it's like, okay, then, you know, you don't have to do that. Or like, if I would ask him to, we were doing something and I'd ask him to sit, he was just, look at me after he'd done so many, he's like, I'm not sitting anymore. And so some of that I chalked up to, you know, it's really hard on their hips sitting and getting up, sitting and getting up. So I taught him to stand stay. So that's how I adjusted for that. Okay. Um, and it's like, and I was fine with that, you know? So when I see dogs that do that to me, it's just like it, first off it's boring. And sometimes it's, they get frustrated because of the boredom. You know, it's like, I want, I want to keep moving. I want to use my brain and you're not using my brain. You're giving me things that are boring me to death. And now it's making me anxious, you know? So, um, some dogs don't like repetition and you know what, that's okay. And the fact that you recognize that is really, really good. So, um, I mean, it's nice to see what you already know about your dog. And, um, so what I did, because this is a practical, you know, and we're required to set up for certain times and stuff like that. As I knocked her back by 10% out of your 130, I knocked her back to 121, simply because I knew that you'd been out of town and now it's a so total different setup. You've got me talking to you and, you know, so it changes the environment a little bit mm -hmm. and I just want her to be successful. I mean, my goal is to have her successful. If she succeeds or not, it doesn't matter. It's still, you know, we want this for her, even though it's my test. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I will say like 
She, I still haven't gotten her to the point where she'll like settle during any entry. Like she'll stand, she'll look at the door, she'll be like curious, but she never like lays down or, or chills. And right now the way we, I have it set up, like I can show you, but I'm in my office uh-huh. and my office is attached. It's like an L shape. So it's uh-huh. attached to my bedroom Okay. and I leave the door open in between. And so she has like, during the day I put a sheet over my bed and I let her sleep on my bed. That's her oh. favorite place. Um, so that's where she is right now. And then she also has like a dog bed in my office. Oh, good. And there's room on the floor, obviously, for her to stretch out. And she's got a toy basket and she's got toys on the bed, like a stuffed animal on the bed with her. So she has enough to like equip her for X amount of time. And she also has like a choice of places to go lay down. Yeah. Um, she just doesn't. That's interesting. Um, have you ever worked that with her just out of curiosity? Like, do you know how to train, like go to a mat or go to a place, something like that? Mm-hmm. So, and does she ever lay down when she does that? If I am putting her there, she'll go in and she'll stay like to wait for her treat. Yeah. But then she'll get back up. Now, if she's like on her own and she wants to bring a toy over there or whatever, like right now, like she's passed out of my bed and she'll sleep there. But like, if I'm not in the room, she will not oh. relax there. Oh, interesting. Well, so that's really good for me to know is that um, when you go out the door, she's probably not going to lay down. She's probably going to be standing, right? I'm probably staring at the door. <laughs> okay, so so tell me what you think because you've been doing this, you know, a while with your dog. So what I did is I set her up for one warm up of. Um, let me find where I put my notes. Hold on. I keep moving everything around my desk because my desk just flat is not big enough for all the crap mm-hmm. I have on it. <laughs> so I did one 10 second warm up. Do you think she mm-hmm. can handle that? She will most likely, as soon as she hears me at the door, she'll jump up and she'll okay. come to the door. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then when I come back in, she might stay or she might go back to the bed. Uh huh until the next one i mean if you think that she'll struggle with it we can next it and we can just do your go out the door do your one minute 21 seconds and then come back in and we're done your choice she, she's up and down like sometimes i do one warm-up sometimes i'll close the door in between the rooms like for the okay. bed. Uh-huh. sometimes i get up and move around um i've been trying to like see what's optimal for her and i i haven't like my goal would be like it's so short like you don't even need to get up off the bed right (laughs) right right. um but like the minute she hears the door open she'll probably be up and be off the bed sure she's very tired like we've walked we walked like a mile she's been in the pool twice so oh yeah she's pretty tired Mm -hmm. okay so i mean if you think she'll she'll do that what i'm going to do is just the one warm up at 10 seconds and then we'll do the um, one minute, 21 seconds for her actual departure. And okay. then we're just going to call it done. Okay. okay. So um, let, let me get your cell phone number so that I can text you if she like totally freaks out. <laughs> I mean, I, and I was going to say, I'll be able, I can like also click into Zoom if you'd rather me do that. Like I can come in on my phone because you're on my laptop. So you tell me oh, what's sure. easiest. Sure, whatever is easiest for you. Let me see if I can join. Because usually uh, when I do it, I have this laptop on. Yeah. And then I will like go out the door with Zoom on my phone. Oh, perfect. Um, so she's, and just so you know, like as far as this, like us meeting, she's very used to that because I train a lot of clients this way. Got it. So in fact, like if you and I were to stop talking, she would get up anyway and come out here. Like, why are you being quiet? Yeah. Like, are you done working? Is it time yeah. to get up? Um, yeah. So she's very used to this. And then, so which door do you leave out of? The one behind me. Oh, okay. By the plant. Recording in progress. Awesome. Okay, and I'm just gonna, I'm muting everything so okay. that it doesn't give feedback. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, you've been doing this well. You're doing awesome. <laughs> okay, so whenever you're ready, let's see what she'll do. 
Okay. So if you can point your um, thing so I can see her. I was just gonna say, let me move this okay. lower and I can move this chair over and you'll see she'll stand right here. she did great she was very curious um you know it's like let me see if i can smell you through the door 100 mm -hmm. um, yeah but that was super nice somebody so, once was like oh leave your gym clothes like outside your door and i'm like no, she's not stupid <laughs> no <laughs> they're not they're not it's like you know uh unfortunately other people don't understand unless they've been in your situation. So, it, you know, you just have to go, okay, I just you know, say, oh, good idea and go on, right? So that was really nice. And she's laying down, she's not asleep yet. She's looking like annoyed. And she's like, why did you wake me up? <laughs> well, because you're a dog and that just happens. Um, so let's let's go ahead and do your one minute, 20 seconds. I've got my okay. phone set up too, so I can time you. So and that I know because, you know, it seems like a long time when I'm sitting on this end. Um, do you want me to like move away from the door, stay right outside the door? I want you to do exactly what you've been doing. So okay. have you just been standing right outside the door? I've been standing right outside or I'll move a few steps into the hallway. Okay. Um, the first day we did it after I got back, like I said, she had been up to a minute 30. The first day after I got back, she gave me like a little bark at like fifth. I marked everything in the app. So like she gave yeah. me a little bark at like 55. Yeah. Um, like, and again, sometimes it's like, I think she's just like annoyed. She's like, I know you're there. Just come back in and sit down so I can go back to sleep. Right. But did she give you any other body language other than just the little bark? No, she hasn't done like the pacing. She used to like, um, when I first started trying to do it when she was a puppy, she would like pace around the whole room and she would like, um, like touch all, like she would go to like her crate and my bed and the dresser and that like sure. touch all the objects and just keep pacing. She doesn't really do that anymore at all. She just like yeah. sits at the door and like does this thing. Yeah. Which is really good because the you know she's not doing a lip like I didn't see from what I could see no lip licking, um you know no panting nothing like that so yeah. um you know there there were no um, signals that she was stressed so that was great right like so, if I put up the baby gate like let's say I'm getting a delivery and I go downstairs it's all of those she starts like stamping her little feet right. and she howls and yawns and does all the the things and when she's in here not so much so the baby gate may become have become a trigger for her because she knows when you put that baby gate up that you're leaving so um i think it's also like she can't get she can see me but she can't get to me um because yeah. i notice even if i'm cleaning like sometimes if i'm washing the floors i'll like put the baby gate up oh yeah like she doesn't like that she can't get to where i am hmm, interesting yeah Okay. Well, I'm like it's in the house, like we can see each other, like I'm barefoot. Sure. Like, no, I'm not going anywhere, but right. it still is like a trigger for her. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, let's try your one minute and 21 seconds. Let's see how she does. All right. And I have absolute faith that she's going to kick this out of the park. I know it's annoying. You like can't see her face when I, I go, That's, but like, I just don't okay. set this up. So I'm looking at all her body language. It doesn't have to be just the face. Okay.
You can't tell no. So I think overall she did really, really well. I don't know if you noticed or not. When you walked out the door, she came to the door, her tail was up. And then you walked out and that tail went flat down. It's really interesting. Um, she does not lots of nice knocking around, you know, but her body was nice and soft. And so until you got those couple little barks, um, she did really good. So I love how much you have worked on this and you know your dog. So that's lovely. You're doing a great job with her. Thank you. Um, so yeah, the the I would say, you know, continue on with your the timing that you're doing because she did good with this. And I I did see the bark as being a stress. It was more like, hey, where are you? Um, she does check the door and sort of listen for you to see if she can hear you there. Mm -hmm. So you know, at some point we'll want to step like you're doing a couple paces away so you're not as close but yeah i have tried doing it um like i said i have like railroad rooms right so i can actually like go out this hallway and into the rest of my apartment oh uh-huh um so like there have been times where like she's supposed to be napping and i just need to like run to the bathroom or like run and get more water or something and i will put on the timer then when I do that, yeah, um, which is how I know she can like do, you know, like the 130 or like closer to two minutes if I like, sure. but also like, I think she hears the store go and then she hears the second door. So she knows that I'm just in the apartment still. Yeah. Um, but she's still doing the exact same thing, like standing there, like waiting for me to get yeah. back. Well, it, it's a little, you know, obsessed with the door because you're going out the door um and you know hopefully the longer you get into this with some more time the we can hopefully make the door not so much of an obsession uh and that she can sort of chill out there and i'm wondering does she like she she doesn't like to lay down she always stands right always stands yeah. um yeah and i don't know if it's obviously i feel like it's such a short time like I wonder like when she gets up to like 15 minutes or something, will she just be like, all right, I'm over standing here. So even if she's staying by the door, is she sure. gonna like lay down? Sure. Well, and you know, I mean, an option that you can do is put um, a bed or something that she likes to lay on, like take a second sheet that you use on your bed and use it by the door. So it's a familiar thing and it's a familiar smell um, so that she does have the option to lay down on something that's comforting to her. Okay. You know, um, but yeah, she did awesome. You're doing awesome. So you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. This is a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work. Um, and so for enrichment, when you're in the house, are you using like puzzle balls and um, like snuffle mats and things like that? Yeah, she has, uh, she's very food motivated. So I Good. try to be like careful because um, she will eat me out of house and home like she just has no off switch when it comes to food yeah um so like occasionally if it, it might be like a rough day or something like for example if she's gonna like spend the night with my mom or whatever we'll do um like a puzzle ball and I'll break up like a cbd treat in there um and let sure, her get that sure. she really loves that but I don't like to give them to her on the regular sure um she has a snuffle mat we do a lot of um like training, like practicing different commands. And as soon as she masters one, like we keep training the same ones. Yeah. Um, and we train them like outdoors or like with distractions. Um, and as soon as she learns one, we move on to a new one. She eats out of puzzle dishes when she eats her actual like meals and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then we play like we play Tide, we play Fetch, we play like her favorite game is like to run around the table and for me to like chase her yeah and he loves to try and like outsmart me by like turning back in the other sure. direction and like, sure. so we will play those type of games and do training and stuff probably like three to four times a day yeah that's awesome so you're using the app right mm -hmm. yeah so um since you know that you're at the 130 i think is where you said that she's doing really well so are you going to go up 
from that the next time that you try her at the door? So I haven't gone up since I got home just because those little barks. Sure. Um, so I don't know when the right time is to progress. If like, it's when she's completely calm. I haven't, um, cause I know you can like set a custom duration or whatever. And I didn't sure. know cause I haven't, um, been doing the app for so long and I, I didn't know if it like starts moving you up on its own or if you make the adjustments or like how that works. Yeah. So, um, just from the little bit that I've used of the app from what I've seen, and this is something that would, you could ask in your heroes group, but I think when you put in, um, and you put in your duration that you want your total duration for that one, the next time you go in, it should offer you an increase. Um, so, you know, I would look at if she's doing 130 successfully, mm -hmm. I'm really not concerned about those little barks. Um, okay. I would see, I would go up this next time. Um, so you can increase by 10 to 20% from where she is. So okay. I would go 10% and let's see. So let me tell you what that would be. Um, I've got this little handy nifty little app that they did where you can figure it out. Um, and how much to go up. So if she's doing one minute, 30 seconds, and we're gonna multiply that by 10%. Tools. That's not right. Hold on. 130. Make sure I'm doing this right. Let me find my note. Duration times, yeah, times 10%. 10%. Oh, back up. Hold on. Times 10%. This is not right. Would be that I have you on the phone. I mean, on the phone. On the. Um, Let me see. So I think, um, like, so when she does a little bark like that, do I have her come back in or? I wouldn't for the bar. I didn't see any stress in her body. Okay. Um, besides her tail being down, I didn't see a stiffened body. I didn't see ears that went back. Um, I didn't see any lip licking. I didn't see anything that would indicate to me that she was a little stressed. Okay. Um, so why is this not, this is annoying because I've done this so many times now, and now it doesn't want to give it to me like I want it. Hmm. I know, I'm in the app right, right now, too. Plus. I saw it just got updated, though. Yeah, and um, actually, I was in it earlier trying to view something, and I couldn't get to it. Okay, so you're going to, so if you go up 10%, it's 1 minute 39 seconds. Okay. So I would try her at 1 minute 39 seconds and see how she does. And um, since she doesn't like the warm ups, just nix the warm ups and let's see how she can do. And if she continues to bark, then we know that it's too much and you're going to go back down. Okay. Okay. So you want to go up or go down instead of holding. Okay. So okay. if she's been successful at 130, you want to go up. If she's not successful, you want to go down. Okay. So I would try her at one minute, 39 seconds.